before tonight, I knew you were going to win the presidency. I had no doubt. Arkansas is going to come in huge. But now I know you're going to win Michigan by epic margin. I think they're down by 10 in Michigan or some sh Ladies and gentlemen, we need you to show up. We need they should you be down by 30, but like... The future of my kids, your kids, our grandkids depends on whether or not... It's only two or Donald three. Oh, God. It's... The White House and okay, maybe not, not gonna let 10. Us down. They're going to win Michigan unironically. If they win Michigan, it is entirely More because of the Democratic Party's open incompetence on Gaza policy. But I don't think though I don't think the Republican Party will Thank win you. Michigan. That's what I mean. I'm a student and Muslims and students are not voting Dem. You're wrong. Isn't his tariff point and capital gains point in direct contradiction? Have you talked about the pagers? What do you f think? Of course, dude, I covered it. Harris's largest lead to date in our tracker, 4.4 points. Wait, but this is not, this is not in Michigan. It's just in general. That's a national, that's a national poll aggregate. Oh my God. Michigan is 48 to 47. Holy shit. It's still too soon to judge the fallout from the presidential debate, but the poll suggests that Kamala Harris might be poised to gain. The initial surveys of people who watched the debate found that most viewers thought she beat Donald Trump and candidates deemed winner and post-debate surveys usually tend to gain in the polls. That seems likely to be the case again. The first few polls taken entirely since the debate show her faring a bit better than the polls taken beforehand. Bro, I was... I thought Michigan was in better... I thought that Michigan was definitely better than 50-50, dude. I was wrong. I've been saying Michigan doesn't like Whitmer. You're wrong about that. Michigan does like Whitmer. Yes, I saw that 11... Michigan Attorney General charges 11 pro-Palestinian protesters at University of Michigan. All the protesters charged by the state's Attorney General were pro-Palestinian. Nessel issued a stern warning to protesters not to engage in what she called illegal activity. Demonstrating... Dude, look at the dire situation that we're in. Look at the horrifying situation that we're in. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel has, has filed criminal charges against 11 pro-Palestinian protesters at the University of Michigan, alleging that several of them used physical force to counter police officers clearing a tent encampment in Ann Arbor. One of the protesters was charged with ethnic intimidation after he allegedly attacked a pro-Israel rally. The charges brought by Nessel's office were filed Wednesday in 15th District uh, Court in Washtenaw County, where there have been a number of protests on campus over the last year demonstrating against Israel's military actions in Gaza. Nessel, Nessel issued a stern warning to protesters not to engage in what she called illegal activity. <laughs> yeah, illegal activity, as in hurting Israel's feelings. You cannot hurt Israel's feelings. Kamala's best swing state right now is Wisconsin. Wisconsin, where she's up three points. Good news for Kamala elsewhere is the PA new poll came out showing her up three over Trump post-debate. Did you see Billie Eilish is supporting Kamala? Yeah. And also friend of the, or fan of the show, Hassan Abihead Phineas, as well as Billie Eilish, her and her brother, both. Michigander here. I think people underestimate how significant the Muslim Arab population is in Michigan. It's a massive constituency and they can absolutely swing the state. I mean, I've been saying that. I still think that like the gains made with the UAW and also the fact that Gretchen Whitmer is like a relatively popular governor in the state makes it so that Michigan should be a lock. I mean, Michigan should be a lock in general. It's massive, but Dearborn will not make or break the election. You're it's, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. That's like 200,000 direct voters that have post 9-11 historically voted overwhelmingly for the uh, overwhelmingly for the Democratic Party. No, I'm not even talking about just Dearborn. Like I'm talking about like you're you're talking about a state that Biden won by 100,000 votes. And there are significantly more voters that have openly said they're not voting for Biden or for Kamala Harris now that Kamala Harris is like latched on to Biden's objectively unpopular Israel policies. Nope, they know that they could win the Arab vote in Michigan. They're choosing not to and they're wrong. Calculus, they think they can win without Michigan. They're trying to claw some back, but it won't work. I, I mean, I remember seeing uh, articles written about the internal polling showing that uh, Michigan is doing much better. Like Michigan is doing well from their calculations. Michigan native here, they're running pro Israel's ads on TV on top of everything to make it even worse. Yeah, that's not the Harris camp running that. That's ridiculous. If you think like the Democrats are stupid, but if you think the Democrats themselves are running pro Israel ads in fucking Michigan, you're out of your dang mind. I mean, they are running a pro Israel ad every time Kamala Harris opens their stupid mouth about Israel. But yeah, I mean, they should just run this. Beep. <laughs> They should run this in, in, uh, in Michigan. Beep, beep. <laughs> like a f 
eight-year-old was murdered. No other people openly celebrate and boast about their terrorist acts the way Zionists do. They are so incredibly unhinged because they know they face no consequences. How long can this continue? I think they think the Arabs will just eventually give up and through lesser evil voting, will vote them anyways. I think what they fail to consider that like there are plenty of Arab voters who are just going to be like, I'm voting for Donald Trump. F this shit. Either way, why even leave that room for error? Because they don't care. That's it. Yeah, they're talking about, he's laughing about a 10 year old girl being blasted. 4,000 people like maimed, mauled. It's not good math for us, but Biden could have lost 100% of the current day pro Palestine vote in Dearborn and Detroit and still won the state. And Detroit uncommitted, that's not true. And you're wrong if you think that the Detroit uncommitted uncommitted leaders endorsing Kamala means anything in terms of the way that those people are going to vote. You're, this is a lot of wish casting, my man. And also absolutely not Biden would have won Detroit or I mean, won in De vote in Dearborn in Detroit and still won the debate, uh, won the state. What is the beep beeper reference to? They're talking about, um, the beepers that exploded that were packed with explosives. I don't know, man. I feel like Kamala has a chance of turning Tennessee blue. What? Yeah, I don't think Kamala is going to turn Tennessee blue. That is, I don't know. I think that chatter was just joking. A record low number of Americans say they are still undecided. How many are there? Because it's kind of hard to believe. It's kind of hard to believe, but the bottom line is huh. that 4%, 4% in the average of polls, 4% of voters say that they are undecided. That is just half the level that we saw in 2020, well less than the 10% we saw at this point in 2016. So the bottom line is, in this particular election, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are focusing their attention on this tiny, tiny sliver, much lower than we're used to. In fact, it's the lowest level of undecideds that we've seen in polling at this point this entire 21st century. You know what? That is not surprising at all, that that number is so low. But within the margin of error, all the polls that you've been looking yes. at, <laughs> that number make is it. extremely significant. Exactly. It can make all the difference in the <laughs> right? world. Um, so what do these undecideds care about? What are their big issues? What are their top... Let me guess. Um, let me guess. Let me guess. They want tax cuts. They want deregulation. They want more war. They want NATO. They want to kill immigrants. And if Kamala Harris doesn't secure all five of these at the same time, these undecideds will vote for the Republican Party, except they will vote for the Republican Party even after Kamala Harris makes a pledge to do all five of those things that they want. So let's see. Top issues. Well, perhaps not, not surprisingly, 30% say the economy inflation. That's number one. But number two, they actually don't have a top issue. 28% say there is no top issue, which perhaps isn't so surprising given that they're probably not as tuned into politics. They might care more about the characteristics of the candidates themselves rather than the issues that they represent. But I think that you get this. I love that American media totally looks at like the absolute dumbest people in society and consistently props them up as like the only people that matter in the conversation. It's great. I think we are actively positioning, we are actively positioning people to be even dumber and dumber. Large chunk of undecideds, right, that, or the large chunk within the undecideds who say there's no type issue. That, of course, makes it difficult for the campaigns to go after them because what exactly are you going to talk about to the folks who say, wait a minute, we don't have a top issue. Right. That's that's a hard thing. But obviously, the economy, the economy, the economy, that is the issue that seems to be across, over, across, across all. Um, so there are a lot of people, we just sort of mentioned this, that don't really understand how anyone could be undecided at this point in the election cycle and with this particular particular election. So what's the deal? What's the deal? Well, I think this might sort of get at it. 2024 is the most important election of my life. 72% of Trump backers say it is, 70% of Harris backers say it is, but just 24% of undecideds say it is. So the bottom line is they don't actually think there's that much on the line going on here. And that is, I think, part of the reason why they're willing to stay back and just say, you know what? I don't really necessarily like either of these folks. I don't think this is the most important election. So, you know what? I'm going to continue to be undecided. Of course, there's just 4% of them, but that 4%... Okay, I take it back. They're actually brilliant. <laughs> it's going to make all the difference in the world come November. They very well could. But if they're not paying attention, like you said, they might start paying attention as we get very, very, very close to the election. Exactly. But at this point, they just don't really think 2024 is that important. So that's why they're not paying attention. All right, Harry. And we know we think is important, but there's Thank that. You. All right, Kate. All right. Joining us right now is Republican Congressman from Florida, Trump. Remember, the average undecider in focus groups usually holds two views that counter each other easily. Yeah, exactly. They literally in the same breath will say, I love immigrants. I work with immigrants every day. They're wonderful and they help the economy. 
And then they'll be like, we have to deport every single one of them. And not a single one of them will ever turn around and be like, is this inherently contradicting? They will not. They will never question it. And because, because of the way that American... Uh, society, American exceptionalism and American individualism works, those unique snowflakes are are truly brilliant and you have to treat them as though they are truly brilliant and not like what you just said is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Ryan Ruth is that man. Seemingly he made up his mind at the end, but if you look at his like political opinions over the course of many, many years as we did, you will realize what it looks like <laughs> in the mind of an average undecided swing voter. I, I don't know if they're conflating undecided voters with unconvinced voters. I suspect that there's a little bit of that going on in a lot of these instances because the idea of like undecided is uh is is basically like I could vote for Trump or I could vote for Kamala. I'm undecided. When in fact Many people are not conflicted between the two, even though if you ask the New York Times, they only care about people who are conflicted between the two, which is very frustrating because most people aren't like that. It's actually people that are deciding between voting or sitting on the couch. Campaign surrogate Byron Donalds. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Bouncing off the conversation that Harry and Sarah were just having, how undecided do you think the diminishing number of undecided voters really are this election at this point? Uh, I believe there's someone. I also have a firm commitment. I have a, a, a genuine belief that like every undecided voter is just a Republican voter. <laughs> I believe that because if you if you look at a guy like Donald Trump and you're like, I'm undecided about I want to go out and vote, but I don't know. Let me hear out this Trump guy like, yeah, you're probably a Trump guy. Aren't you undecided? No, dude. What the fuck? I, I, I should probably say I'm undecided. Maybe then the New York Times will interview me so I can talk about Israel and then they'll definitely not put that in the article. <laughs> no, I'm not undecided. I'm riding in Biden, baby. I'm riding in motherfucking Biden. Dude, at this point, please, dude, if you were a former Trump voter and you're claiming to be undecided, what the f*** do you need to hear? How many former Trump voters who are still currently undecided exist? Get the f*** out of here, dude. No, they're voting for Donald Trump, but they're still like kind of embarrassed about it. Okay, that's it. Suck my dick. If you claim to be undecided between Kamala and Trump at this point, and you're a lifelong Republican voter and you voted for Trump twice, you're gonna f vote for Trump. Like, what are we doing? Of course, you're gonna f vote for Trump. It's so transparent. It's so stupid. Not even last week you were saying, I don't know who I'm voting for, but I'll never vote for Trump or something similar. No, last week I was also saying I'm voting for Biden. I'm riding in Biden, baby. Also, I'm a political commentator. There's a lot of people who want to cast aside my commentary by simply saying, oh, he's a Harris supporter or, oh, he's a Trump supporter. That is the reason why I do not declare who I would be supporting in the election. It's because people want to say, oh, he's not going to vote for Kamala Harris, so don't listen to him. Everything he says, it's not about like who I'm voting for at all. It's actually entirely about how to make my commentary seem less relevant. Of course, make up your own goddamn minds. Trump supporter or not, people only want to know if you'll vote for Harris or not. Yeah, exactly. And for the record, I'm unconvinced. And not only that, but also I'm riding in Biden. Step aside, liberals. You will not be able to convince me what you did to Joseph Robinette Brandon was inexcusable. And I, as an AUKUS voter, me and Ryan Ruth are going to hold hands at the poll and we're going to go... Cast a ballot. We're going to write in Biden. But undecided. I think they're juggling through the realities of America. Number one, the economy, this massive inflation uh, created by Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Uh, the immigration problems in our country are real. They're looking at that. But then I also do believe they're, they're having the... For the record, I'm not on one team or another. I'm on whoever advances and, and improves the material conditions of the working class. That's whose side I'm on. And neither party is even remotely trying to make a convincing case that they are on the side of the working class. Neither party is doing that. So I will forever criticize both parties for not doing that. There are people that literally Less say they decided the Less than two months until the box. election, and we can hear the candidates' voices nearly every day. But what about voters? 
Since June, the NewsHour has followed a group of undecided voters from across the country and across the political spectrum. What if I'm an undecided voter who really cares about NATO? There was only one candidate who did NATO, and now he's not in the race. I cried that day. Yeah, I mean, I'm that voter. Joe Biden did NATO, and he's going to do Taiwan. It's me, it's Ryan Ruth, it's Van Jones. In our latest installment of the Deciders series, we found some movement and a lot of thoughts. My name is Stephen Beck, and I'm from Madison, Alabama. No, you heard a lot of statements. You didn't hear a lot of thoughts. You had a lot of you heard a lot of statements, but not a lot of thoughts. You heard the opposite of thoughts, in my opinion. In past election cycles, I have not been undecided. This would probably be the first time I've been truly undecided, especially this late in the game. Wait, 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 wait. Ask him who he voted for. My name is Jessica Dalton. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Undecided, I think, is too vague of a term. I've always been open to um, listen to what each candidate has to offer and making my decision based on who the candidate is rather than what the party is offering. I'm Zach Warren, and I'm 35 years old, based in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I'm one of those voters that does wait to the last second. I remember my even back to like 2008 and 2012 and 16, I always wake up on election day and make that choice because there's a lot of things that can happen between now and that's this, this is my, okay this guy's awesome also chat this man is two years older than me this man is only two years older than me november my name is stephen stone i'm in brooklyn i have to choose between kamala or just not voting for the president in this election i'm robert lilly i'm that guy was cool i can tell Wickenburg, arizona i typically don't decide and for sure i'm not 100 percent until election time my name is Anna and I live in the suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. Before the debate, I was already against Trump. That's not happening. I don't trust either of them as commander in chief or even as necessarily head of government. It seems like a race to the bottom more than anything. It's not about anybody having any sort of real ideology and the concerns of the majority of American people at, at heart. Uh, it felt very much about just being better than your competitor. I'm holding out hope and believing that potentially some of these other movements, these leftist movements, again, the Green Party to move for more left as opposed to the right. It does not feel good. At best, I would be holding my nose to vote for Kamala. Yes. Not knowing enough about her is part of the indecisiveness as far as who. Finally, dude, a f this is the first time I've ever heard someone openly state this in any any one of these like different polls where the guy's like, thank Christ, dude, there's like one current message, but Greens, come on, man. He didn't say he's voting for Jill Stein. He said he hopes that the Green Party will be able to convince and move Kamala Harris to the left, which they won't. I see as just the much lesser of two evils. And um, so that that's the man I had to vote for. These are not easy decisions to make. They touch on so many aspects of our lives and they don't just affect us individually. They affect us globally. He's still a dumbass, Hassan. Quit glazing. Why is he a dumbass? He's right. He's right. He's saying it's it's ridiculous to demand someone's vote without making any f concessions whatsoever. Bro, go back 200 IQ with that Green Party sh no, he's, I mean, he's silly for thinking that the, like, the Democratic Party is going to move to the left, but he just used the Greens as an example. He didn't say he's voting for the Green Party, did he? I Did I miss it? No, he just said he hopes that leftist movements or the Green Party will be able to convince and, and uh, move Kamala Harris to the left. And unless that happens, he's not going to vote. That's a good thing. If you ever get a call... Like from one of these places, you should say that. You should say that all the time. Leading up to election day, I'm looking forward to Vice President Harris and Governor Wall speaking more to their economic policies, specifically their small business initiatives. I think those are very important, as well as child care. I think those go hand in hand and their stance on women's health care. I wish I could vote for my values in this election. I'll still be voting because there's a lot of down ballot votes that. Uh... OK, this dude is literally here. OK, which one of you is this guy? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, cop to it. Like, come on. Are important to me as you know, they should be to everyone. Not voting is never an option. Um, that is my my privilege as an American citizen. People have laid down their lives for that, and I will vote in every election that I'm asked to vote in. As divisive as, as it is, I, I still think that, um, I still have like this belief that we're going to be okay and that we're going to do the right thing and, and that things are going to be all right.